Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the Bankroll Challenge. We started today with $94 and a few cents. And today we're going to be incorporating some raise first in ranges into our game plan. So as you can see, I have the ranges for six max over here on the right hand side of the screen. Um, these are what you'll be opening in the small blind. You see the uh, legend down here and we've got all the ranges going over to early position, middle position, cutoff, button. So kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to be working with. We'll see how these uh, affect our win rate. We lost a little bit in our first session playing the micros and we're going to see if we can win that back and then some today. Obviously not trying to get anything crazy going on with Jack three off. Um, was it Jack? Oh, we got a pair now, but I don't think we're going to be, uh, not going to be getting crazy. Go ahead and keep noting players. As you can see from last time, we have Mr. Senior over here. So he may be something of a quote regular. Oh, and we take it down with our three on the river. That works for me. Okay, so let's take a little look here. We have Jack nine offsuit. So you go over here and look. Here is Jack nine offsuit in the. Uh... So, okay. It would say from the small blind to call but that would mean limp. You're not calling a raise with Jack nine offsuit. So we're gonna go ahead and fold. Um, the mix strategy, we are going to be playing primarily as raises at this stake because you wanna, you'll just be printing money with value bets here. So we definitely wanna value bet as often as we possibly can. Um, some of the calls we may we may end up not calling or we may end up opening them. Um, but having ranges like this just gives you a good baseline. So let's go over to the button ranges. So you're gonna either raise or fold from the button 90% of the time, like no, more than 90% of the time, you're gonna wanna play either a raise or fold strategy. Um, limping is just, it's just not good. Just don't wanna be doing it. Um, so we're hoping to find a hand somewhere in this red range and hoping to get the action folded to us maybe. Okay, queen eight off, that's right on the edge. Um, probably gonna be looking to fold if it, even if it gets folded to us. I mean, if it gets folded to us, we're gonna go ahead and get, we're gonna go ahead and open. Okay, well, we're definitely not gonna call a seven X open. So against huge opens like this, you can play very exploitively by either by like three betting only your best hands. You can just, you can really take advantage of that because there's opening themselves up to problems. So let's see, 10, nine. Not going to be uh, not going to be getting involved with ten nine offsuit. Once again, we're right on the very edge, but we'll get them. Let's see what the early position range looks like. See how it gets tighter each each street, which makes sense. So you have more people to act behind you. You're going to be playing a tighter range of hands. Let's see a six off. Once again, from other positions, this would be an open, but. Not here, so go ahead and toss it in. Oh, we have these out of order. This is actually the range we'll be using for middle position, which is what we were at in this hand. But as you can see, a six off, still a fold. So we will be in early position, next hand. Oh, 
let me know in the comments if you uh, would prefer to have avatars on or off. It doesn't really make any difference to me. Just seem to look a little bit cleaner with them off. That's a third of the pot on the turn after everybody checked the flop. And I'll take it down. Doesn't seem like anybody is getting crazy out of line except for this guy with his huge open size earlier. Okay, 9-5 off. Looks like a fold again. Now, playing discipline tight ranges is very important. It's hard to uh, overstate how big of a difference just starting your game off with a solid foundation of having like a good range. Like you don't want to be playing like queen seven off under the gun. You don't want to be playing jack five suited. Like these are just easy to avoid mistakes that you can avoid forever. Got a little bit of a pot brew in here. That's an action river, I would think. Hopefully we can get a showdown, get a little bit of information on our opponents. Hmm. It goes to the full pot size bet on the river. Bishudo Valor is having a little think about it. Wouldn't be shocked to see him use some extra time. Oh, nope, he just folds. Hmm, that's unfortunate for us. No free information. Okay, pocket aces from the big blind. So since it's not a raise first in position, we don't have a raise first in range for the big blind. However, with pocket aces here, we're obviously going to raise it up. We have one limper. So we're going to go ahead and make it 4x, which seems fairly reasonable since our normal opening size at this stake is going to be 3x. And we'll add on one big blind for each limper, unless we decide to adjust. We get two calls, which we love. A pretty dry flop. We can definitely, uh, we should definitely be c-betting here, because our opponents can have lots of pairs on these, on this flop. So we're gonna we're gonna size up and c-bet. Not quite full pot. Hmm. We might have went too big. I think you want to charge a lot there though, because people are very often going to have a piece of that flop. We'll take the small win. Let's get back to our small blind range. So ace nine off. It's like it's going to be a raise if it gets folded to us or if this guy limps. All right, so we're going to go ahead with our normal raise sizing or three X. And take it down. All right. So we got a little bit of a little bit of profit going. All right. Let's look at our button range here. Pretty sure king six off. Yeah, is, looks like it's going to be a fold. But as you can see, these. Just these very simple pre-flop ranges will keep you from making a lot of mistakes and getting yourself into a lot of tough situations. Like it can seem like no big deal to make a uh, a few loose calls or make a few loose limps pre-flop with some sub-optimal hands, but that leads you to making some can lead you to making some really big mistakes later in the hand. Like what happens if I limped with king six off here and the flop comes king high? Well, I'm going to want to continue in the hand, but might not be in that great of a spot. Let's see if we can find our cutoff range here. All right. So as you can see, Jack 10 suited is definitely an open. So we're going to go ahead and do our normal open size. Now, eventually we'll look more in depth into what to do when there's a limper in the pot. But for right now, we're going to keep on with our strategy of adding one big blind per limper 
and sticking with our normal open ranges. So we flop middle pair here. So if this was a rainbow board, I think we would check. But since it's a since we've got two hearts, we're gonna go ahead and bet here. Okay, we get a call. So by betting there, we're trying to protect, we're trying to charge the flush draw, the flush draw as much as possible. So now with a nine, we can hit a straight. I think we can. Hmm. He just called. So how many queens does he have in this range? I feel like there's a few queens in this range. We'll go ahead and check. Okay, the three seems like a fairly safe card, although he has threes in his range and we do not. We're definitely not folding to a bet of four cents. Um, hmm. I think against an opponent we don't really know, we'll just go ahead and call here. We may be missing out on some value, but I don't think he really calls us with worse than Jack 10. So we'll go ahead and call the four cents and see what he's got. Queen five, okay, so. That's why we go ahead and check that river. Um, people calling hands like queen five are exactly, from the small blind especially, are exactly why we want to have these good solid opening ranges. Because that is not a good call preflop. Like obviously, yes, queen five is ahead of jack 10. But if you look, at our what our range would be from the cutoff there how many of how many hands in our range is queen 10 ahead of jack 10 off jack 9 jack 8 suited jack 10 suited and that's it as far as our like value hands now it would have been great if we would have had queen 10 there because I think we could have gotten several, we could have gotten three streets of value easily because I don't think he was ever folding his top pair, but that's okay. We're very happy to watch somebody call our raises with such bad hands pre-flop. That's what, that's one of the best signs of a, uh, a very good game is people making loose calls, lots of limping. Those are all things you want to look for. I think we can actually go ahead and add a note right here. We'll say called from small blind with queen five suited versus Cut off, open. And let we'll say if we get one more uh, note on him for doing something mildly ridiculous, we'll change his uh, badge color to something, or his note color to something to signify that he is uh, somebody we want to play against in the future. So obviously we're not looking to do very much here with our 8-3 offsuit. Hmm, we pick up straight with a 5 or a 9. It's a, a very interesting over bet by Mr. Senior. We're going to go ahead and lay our hand down. Not 100% sure why he would over bet there. Jack four off from the small blind. Or jack four suited, I'm sorry. Hmm, it looks like a call. So we're gonna go ahead and call. Limping, like completing from the small blind is one of the only, it's the only place you'll see anybody from this channel making a uh, a limp play in a cash game setting. Uh, limping can be a little bit more correct in tournaments, but uh, n cash games limping is uh, not something you're gonna see me doing. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down bottom pair here. It might be good, but 
there's no reason to go crazy with a pair of fours on on that particular board. All right, let's look at our button range. King nine off is gonna be an open if it folds to us. Let's see what Mr. Senior wants to do. Okay, he's gonna go ahead and go with the limp. So we're gonna go ahead and open. Trap King likes to call, it seems like. Seems like we have a, uh, an, a caller on our hands. So is Mr. Senior. Hmm, pretty interesting flop. We uh, have a mediocre flush draw and a gut shot straight draw. Hmm. I think we'll go ahead and bet this, but we're gonna bet small. We'd be more than happy to take folds. A call would seem to indicate that they have a heart. All right, cool. I'm going to take that one down. Ace Jack offsuit from the cutoff. Definitely be an open here. So since nobody's limped yet, we'll go ahead and use our normal size of 3x. Another call from Trap King. Seems like he likes to call. OK, so we flop a straight draw to the nuts. So if we get a king, that would be great. We do have an over card. I think this is another spot to see bet. You can usually, you can see bet pretty relentlessly at this level. And you're gonna get, generally speaking, gonna get a decent amount of folds, but you're also gonna get some calls. But we're okay with calls here because we have an over card and we have a, uh, we've got four outs to the nuts, so. But like I said, you'll take it down a lot of times just with a simple bet, so we will scoop that pot. It seems like we're going to go ahead and uh, give Trap King a little bit more of a note. Let's say makes a very, let's just say calls a wide, seems to call a wide range. Preflop. And we're going to go ahead and move him to purple. And we'll try to remember that people who are marked as purple are people we want to play as much as possible. And eventually we'll start trying to do a little bit of uh, game selection, which we'll get into in other videos. Go ahead and mark this new player at the table so we can start keeping track of him as well. I don't think we'll be defending our big blind with 7-9 offsuit against a open and a call. Even though we know Trap King is calling a very wide range, we uh, we don't need to get involved with hands that are this bad. Even for such a good price. If it was suited, I think it becomes a call. But we're going to look into some other ranges that will tell us more about that in the future. And it seems pretty clear that we definitely saved ourselves eight cents. It also seems very unclear what Blue Eyes 82 is opening with and then checking that flop and that turn. And also what Trap King and Mr. Senior are calling with. These all seem like people who are making fairly loose uh, Fairly loose pre-flop decisions, which is something you will definitely see often at this stake. And a pot size bet on a double paired board will take it down from Mr. Senior. All right, eight four offsuit. Go ahead and look anyway, but I could have told you already that that is definitely going to be a fold. And I think we'll play around until uh, until right before our big blind and then call this a session. Of 
queen nine suited. Pretty sure that would be an open from the button. It certainly is. Hmm. Facing a raise from the button. I think we're just going to call here. Especially against somebody that we know plays very loose preflop. Definitely expected the call from Trap King. Not a very good flop for us, unfortunately. We'd like to see some green cards or a queen. But it looks like we're going to see a free turn. Hmm. Too little too late on the green cards. I'd be very surprised to see him check again here, but you never know. Seems crazy to open. Okay, that makes sense. Go ahead and lay it down. He could be doing that with a lot of different hands. Ooh, maybe we'll get some information here. Would love to see a showdown. I kind of expected to go check check here. If uh, Bushido Valor has, oh, okay. Wow, Jack six. So let's keep in mind, Trap King called with Jack six offsuit and then called a bet on the turn with a pair of sixes. He will certainly be somebody that we're looking to play more against in the future. Jack eight is gonna be a fold here. Let me go ahead and look it up on the chart just for, uh, for fun. Jack eight off, as you can see right there, is certainly in the blue fold slash not in range. As we start to wind down here, um, talk a little bit about the next video and about where I got these ranges. Um, I got these ranges from upswingpoker.com. They have they have free ranges on there that you can just download. And uh, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can head over there and download those ranges if you would like to use them as well. It's pretty easy to find uh, pre-flop ranges. Uh, some are better than others, so you're going to want to make sure you find some that look similar to these for playing. And these are specific to playing six max cash games. Also, in future videos, I'm going to be playing at least two tables because the action on one seems a little slow, but it can be a good way to get you started off memorizing your ranges so you know when to be opening preflop. The having solid or raised first in ranges are it's the it's the first building block in uh having a solid strategy to playing at any stake and especially the micros well we finished up 41 cents which we will take for this nice short little session and i think we learned a lot about our ranges so until next time, guys, where we will be um, continuing to use these ranges and going to get some more tables going. Have a good one.